My goal in this video is to customize VS Code so it works very similarly to how RStudio does when it comes to working with R files. So I want to be able to edit my R scripts, run them, see any output in the console. I want to be able to see my active environment variables and be able to edit them and view them. Uh, if I'm generating plots, I should be able to see them within the code editor window. In short, I want to make VS Code feel like RStudio, but I want to stick in VS Code. And the reason for that, if you go over to the notes that accompany this video, I have some uh, bullet points that emphasizes why you might want to work with VS Code for R instead of RStudio. So you can read through that, but let's get right into the details. Step number one is we need to figure out where on our computers R itself is installed because we're going to need to set this path when we configure VS Code. To do this, I'm going to open up my command line program and I'm just going to run the command which R, and that's capital R. And you can see on my computer, it's located in my user local bin directory. So I'm going to make note of that path. Like I said, we're going to need that in a moment. Now, if for some reason, this reports back about command not found, indicating that R is not currently installed on your computer. I do have a link in the notes for where you can go get an R installer and get things set up. Moving on to step two, we're going to install a R package called language server. This is part of the LSP or the language server protocol. Uh, which basically just provides a set of instructions to code editors about how to optimally work with different programming languages. All right, this is how we're going to provide VS Code the instructions it needs to optimally work with R. So we get things like code completion, linting, syntax, highlighting, all of those good code editor features we want. This is going to tell VS Code how to do it specifically for R. So to get this installed, I'm just going to copy this command, install.packages language server. And then back in command line, I want to get to the R console. To do that, I'm just going to invoke the R command. And again, that's capital R. And then now you can see I'm at the R console and I'll just paste in that command. It's going to ask me to choose a location where I want to download this package from. And I'm just going to choose a USA location and click OK. And it looks like that completed successfully. Just to double check, I'm going to run a command called installed.packages. This is going to output all the currently installed packages I have with R. And I'm just going to scroll up and confirm that I see language server there. That looks good. So let's move on to our next step, which is going to happen in VS Code itself. We want to install a R extension. So I'm going to go to the extensions marketplace and I'm going to search for R. I'm going to search for it in quotes just because R is a somewhat of a vague search term. So by putting it in quotes, it's going to ensure that the extension called R is filtered to the top. And we're looking for this extension or, uh, extension by the author R Editor Support. So uh, go ahead and click that and then click Install. And then once that's installed, there are a couple setting changes we want to make that relate to this extension. I'm going to do this via VS Code settings.json file. One way to quickly bring that up is via our command palette. So I'm going to hold down the keyboard shortcut Command Shift P to bring up the command palette. And I'm just going to search for settings and then click on the option Open User Settings JSON. And then jumping back to the notes, we're here under step three. These are the configurations I want to add to that settings.json file. So I'm going to grab those five lines and then go to the end of my settings.json file and paste them in. And the most important thing from these settings is the R binary flag. Here you want to set this to be the path where R is installed on your computer. So in my case, we saw in step one, I have it installed in my user local bin directory, and that's where it's going to find R. So that is the path I have set. If you saw something different when you ran that which R command in step one, you would just want to update this path accordingly. Now I have a couple additional optional settings in place just to customize how R is going to be working with VS Code. I have the flag no save and no restore so that when I'm working with my R files, it's not going to try to save an R workspace and it's not going to try to restore workspaces. That's just personal preference and something I like to instill with students that I'm working with because uh, it forces us to make sure that our R scripts are reproducible, uh, that they can run independently of any workspace settings we have. So feel free to remove those two flags. I just wanted to include them as uh, best practices or suggestion um, and just an example of how you could add additional flags here to influence how R is going to operate in VS Code. But with that, we should be all configured and ready to test things out. So I'm going to close out my settings file, close out this extension, uh, just go back to my file browser, and I've got a demo R file set up with just some example data and a basic histogram uh, function being invoked. 
And just like we would in our studio, we can run individual lines within this file at a time. So I'm just going to put my cursor on this first line where I'm setting a variable called example and I'm just setting it to the numerical value of one, two, three. And to run this line of code, I'm going to run the keyboard shortcut command enter. So you can see that brought up a uh, R console on the bottom and you could see that command was run. And then from the activity bar on the left, if we click the R icon, this is going to bring up the R pane, which was added when we added that R extension. And here we can see information about our environment variables. So there is that example environment variable that I just added. We can see the data type and the contents of that variable. Um, continuing on, there's some example data I have set up via data frame. So again, to run that, I'm just going to put my cursor on the first line and hold down command enter. You can see my environment variables updated. So now I can see that data frame was added there and we can see the output in the console. All right, so just like you would in R, you can go through line by line or block by block within your code and uh, execute it. Or if you want to run everything at once, there's a play button on the top right. If we hover over that, it's the run source option. And you can see the keyboard shortcut is command shift S. So uh, either one of those, if we click that, that's going to run our entire file uh, and you can see in my case at the very end, I had a histogram chart being generated and you can see that that shows up in VS Code. And of course, if you have experience with RStudio, all of this should look very similar to what you would uh, encounter in R where you have your script, you can run individual lines, you can see the output in the console. If you wanted to run the entire file, you could press the source button, you could view your environment variables, you can see any plots that you're generating. Uh, all of these things we're now able to do directly in VS Code. Before I wrap up this video, one last optimization I want to show you is how we can set up Radian, which is going to give you things like syntax highlighting as part of your console output. To see what I mean, if we go back to the notes under the final step bonus step setup Radian, here's a screenshot of the regular R console, and here it is with syntax highlighting, and you can see it makes the code much more legible. So I want to talk about how to get this set up and more uh, specifically how to get it configured so it's working within VS Code. Step one to do this is just making sure you have Radian installed. You could do it with this command. This is uh, going to be using pip, with the, uh, which is Python's package manager. Radian is made to work with R, but it's actually a Python-based package, which is why we're going into the world of Python to get it. Uh, so long story short, run that command. So I'm just going to go back to my terminal window. I'm currently at the R console. I'm going to run the Q function to exit out of there. And then now I'm at my regular prompt, and that's where I'm going to run the pip install command to install Radian. Um, in my case, it's already installed, so you can see it's saying that. It's already satisfied. Uh, in your case, it should go through the process of downloading it and installing it, unless you don't have pip installed. If that's the case, go back to the notes. I have a command that shows you how you can uh, install Python on your computer, which will have pip included as part of it. Once you have Radian installed, uh, if you wanted to interact with it directly from command line, you would just invoke Radian, and that would bring you to uh, basically an R prompt, but it's now via Radian. And you'll notice that as you write R code, you get things like auto completion, syntax highlighting, just lots of useful features for working with R. Um, and that's useful, but remember our goal is to get Radian actually set up within VS Code. So switching context uh, back to VS Code, we've got to go back to our settings file and tell it where it's going to find Radian. So I'm going to bring up my settings. Here are the settings we made previously. And adding on to that, from the notes, there's two additional settings we're going to make related to Radian. So let me copy them and bring them into my settings file. The first setting here is just telling it where it's going to find Radian on my computer. So let's find the path for that back in command line. Let me get back to my regular console. I'm just going to run that command which, but this time I'm going to locate Radian. And let's copy that path. And then back in VS Code, I will set that for my path to Radian. The other setting here is enabling something called bracketed paste. This is going to make it so that we can continue to run chunks of code at a time. Just like I showed earlier, um, in order for that to work with Radian, we do have to have this bracketed paste setting set to true. Now to test this out, uh, the first thing we have to do is if we currently have the R console open, we want to make sure we completely terminate that. So I'm going to click the little trash can icon and then go back to my demo script and just source it again. That's gonna force a new uh, console to open on the bottom and it should open it up with Radian. And you can see I've got syntax highlighting here. I have things like code suggestions as I'm typing and invoking different functions. I've got syntax highlighting, just overall a nicer experience when interacting with R via the console. 
So hopefully this information was helpful if you were looking to make VS Code your primary R code editor.